Raja Parfum is one of the most polarizing lines on the market today. The primary reason for that is its price. The full bottles from this line range from hundreds of dollars up to the thousands of dollars for one bottle. So a lot of times there are opinions out there that they're just simply not worth it. I don't want to pay $1,000 for a bottle of perfume. So we're here today to take a look at, is it worth it? Is it worth it to pay $3,500 for a 100 milliliter bottle of perfume? Now, as we talked about last week in my last video, when you pay a high premium for a scent, there comes a very high expectation for that. And Roger Parfum is the epitome of that. In fact, his slogan is the finest fragrances in the world. That is a very high self-imposed standard that he puts on there. So the first thing we should look at is the presentation when you first get one of these bottles. So it comes in these boxes with a beautiful silk-lined interior here. You can take the bottle out. The first thing that catches your attention, of course, is the cap. That's one of the things that they are known for. These caps have 14 Swarovski crystals on there. This one is the Spirit of the Union bottle, so it has the different colors of the flag of the United Arab Emirates. The cap is actually dipped into, I believe, 18 karat gold. So all of these gold markings you see there, that is real gold. It is very heavy. I've weighed these things before. It's a good solid four, five, six ounces by itself. The scent itself, the label itself is a gold label. This actually is real gold. Sides of the bottles it has the Raja logo on either side. A little back there, it says a fragrance by Raja Dove. It's his own way of signing it, so to speak. So that's what it looks like. Sprayer is very good. I'm not going to do it right here because I don't want to waste too much of this scent. Now when we talk about the scent itself, the first thing to consider is the materials and the quality of what Raja uses are second to none. Up and down his line, they are extraordinarily well-made scents. That is something that is pretty difficult to argue with. Now, whether or not he succeeds at making the quote-unquote finest fragrance in the world, that's a different story. But when you buy a scent from his line, the juice you're going to get is very well-made from very high-quality ingredients. Now, I own seven bottles from the line, but I have tried just about all of them. There's a few I have not tried. And in fact, that's one of the things I wanted to touch on for a second is that he started to release a few too many scents. There are a lot of them that are getting churned out over and over again. And I think when you're setting the bar so high for yourself, you risk diluting your brand a little bit as you release three, four, five, six, seven, eight, sometimes more scents in a year. He also releases a lot of exclusive scents to various cities. The Spirit of the Union one was originally exclusive to the United Arab Emirates. There's one for Moscow. There's one for Germany. There's a couple for the UK. There's some for uh, Bergdorf's in New York City. They're all over the place. And you risk watering down your line a little bit. So slow down, Russia. <laughs> slow down a little bit. Another thing that's a little bit difficult to interpret when you're looking into buying a Raja scent is that his fragrances have so many notes in them. Some of them have upwards of 20 to 25 ingredients, so it can be difficult to get a sense of what the scent smells like. You can read a whole bunch of reviews, you can look at note listings, but they just go on and on forever in terms of how many things he uses. So that can make it a little bit difficult for somebody who's considering a blind buy, who doesn't have access to these lines to try in store. They're not very widely distributed. You can find them a little bit more easily now than in the past. They do sell them at some department stores, but it's difficult to find. So when you're doing research online and you come upon these scents and they have all of these notes up and down, it's difficult to get a really good solid handle of what it's gonna smell like. Now, I used to do a line of videos on here that was called the good, the bad, and the overrated. That's not the purpose of this video, but it's a nice little template to go on as we explore, are these fragrances worth the money? 
I'll say this. There are none from the line that I would consider bad. There's nothing that I have tried from Raja that I would consider to be an awful scent, that it repulses me, that it's just terrible, that it's awfully made. That I haven't run into. Are there things that are overrated? Yeah, there are. The first ones that come to mind are the tutti fruity ones. Sweetie Oud, Candy Oud, Fruity Oud. These were just a bad idea to begin with. Um, I did a video on them a while back. All three of them, really just not for me. Not to mention the name Tutti Fruity is just weird. <laughs> There's no other way to put it. It's got a little, little Richard going all over it. I don't know. But... I applaud him for taking a shot at trying to do something with Oud that hadn't been done before to make it a little bit more approachable to the female market. But I think these three just really missed the mark. And that would be a really good example of something that is overrated and, in my view, not worth the price at about 500 to 550 bucks per bottle. There are varying levels in Raja's line of even higher end luxury scents that cost well over a thousand dollars a bottle and there's one or two that I think would fall into that overrated category one of them is Nuwa now this one was reformulated completely a few years back from its original form not the type of reformulation that we think of in the fragrance game that you've seen with things like the Orom Intense where they just try to make something cheaper this he literally changed the scent because originally it was this incredibly spicy cumin explosion. Now it's not even close to that. It's this spicy grapefruit scent, which I think is good. I've worn it more than a few times myself. I like it. I think it's a well done scent, but at $1,200 a bottle, it's tough to justify, especially because while the ingredients in there are very good, and they're very high quality, they're not terribly exotic. You don't get that feeling of wearing something that you've never tried before when you put that scent on. It's primarily dominated by a spicy grapefruit note, which is really nice. But 1200 bucks for a spicy citrus scent? Mm, not really. That's not, not going to cut it. So... When you get into that higher end stuff, I have not tried his Haute Lux scent, the one that's 3,500 bucks. I have not tried the Great Britain or Britannia scents, the ones that are, I believe they're $1,800 a bottle. But again, once you get into that category, it really, really gets tough to justify the price, especially when you look at the notes of what he uses and none of them really have anything that sticks out as unique as justifying that incredibly, incredibly high price. Now that certainly is not to say that there aren't scents in his line that are worth every penny. And there's a few of them that I wear regularly that I think are some of the best fragrances I have ever smelled, ones that I would want in my collection for as long as I live. Those three, what we can call the good, are Amber Oud, Spirit of the Union, if I don't drop these. And finally, Enigma, or Creation E, as it's called in the United States. These three, if you are looking at the Raja Dove line for the first time, these three are where you should start. If you're looking for a daily driver scent, something as a guy you can wear every day, Enigma is a great place to start. This was the first scent that I tried from the line when I began my journey into it. It was described to me as somewhere in between Tobacco Vanille and Musk Ravageur. That's a pretty good, uh, pretty good description of it. Incredibly well made. Blending is, is just remarkable. A little bit of a boozy, spicy tobacco scent. Touch of vanilla in there. Incredibly well done. Highly, highly recommended. Amber Oud is the, as far as I know, this is the top seller from the entire line. This is a maple sweet oud scent. Really just very unique, 
one of a kind. The performance is excellent. I wear this out for special occasions. I wear this when I go out with friends. I even wear this to work every so often when I feel a little bit, uh, a little bit risky. Um, performance is, is just extraordinary. This one, uh, can't say enough about it. Great juice. Try it if you haven't. And then finally, Raja's foray into the Rose and Oud game, Spirit of the Union. Now, there are a lot of Rose Oud scents out there, as we know. There are hundreds of them, many of them incredibly repetitive, not bringing anything new to the game, not worth looking at. If you are a fan of the Roses and the Ouds, you need to try this. Do yourself a favor and try a sample of it because this is about as good as it gets. Now, I've not been to the Middle East and tried some of the very high-end atars and oils that they have over there, but from what I have access to, this is one of the best that I've tried. So, very pricey, 550 bucks a bottle, but worth every penny. So, is the line worth its price tag? Unfortunately, that's something that I can't answer for you directly. That gets into your personal preference. For me, there are a lot of scents that are. And it's about trying what works for you. There's others besides those three that I wear on a regular basis and that I think are absolutely worth it. I also own his Oud. Very good scent. Don't have much of it left. Might be a split coming up soon of this guy. Um... This is a very well-rounded, daily driver kind of oud scent. I also own his musk oud, another very good one. And his ember extrait, this one is actually discontinued now, you can't buy it. Very good chocolatey amber scent. I also own fetish, which is very similar to Pure Distance M, if you've tried that. Ironically, also made by Raja Dove. Those are the ones that I find are worth it to me. I've tried a few others that are very good, but I don't find myself thinking, yeah, I want to spend money on that. Diaghilev is one of them. A really, really good, very deep, brash, leather, vintage kind of scent. But at $1,200 for a bottle, I don't think, for me, that it's worth it. So I would recommend to you, try as much as you can. It's not cheap. It's worth, if you're into the ultra-luxury, ultra-high-end scents, it's worth trying. Because some of Raj's work is absolutely extraordinary. Some of it, though, isn't. It's not really worth what he's charging for it. You owe it to yourself if you are a fragrance fanatic to at least try him. See if it's worth the money for you. Because when you find it, that can pay off dividends for the rest of your life. I hope that helps. If you have any questions about the Raja line at all, please feel free to ask, especially if any of these scents here you're interested and you've never tried before. I would be happy to answer any questions you have on them and help you out as much as I can or point you in the direction of somebody who might be able to sell you some uh, decants of those to get your nose on it. All right, we'll see you soon.